Hey. Ooh. Oh wait, 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 wait. wait. Uh... Oh yay! Well, <laughs> hi. How are you doing? Oh my goodness. Hey everybody. Hi. <laughs> I... <laughs> oh, I like it. We could just we could do a Conan like. That's a that's enough. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, welcome to another heaping, helping serving of uh, owlbear soup. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 sh we, I shouldn't be allowed to have um, sound effects. This is what we decided whenever we were setting up ahead of time. Uh, I found uh -huh. out that I have side effect or sound effects and I'm not allowed to have those. So <laughs> uh, unbelievable. Oh, man. Oh, and filters. That's the kind like, of heaping helping we get today, though. Yeah, you know? <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, you know, it's been a little while. We have a little bit of energy. We have yeah. we have a whole lot of spice to get get through. And uh... <laughs> <laughs> soundboards is chaos. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right, DJ. <laughs> Regular soundboards are chaos. And I, I, I did used to. It. I used to put one on my phone and in the middle of class, sometimes as I was teaching, I would hit buttons, you know, <laughs> just makes math awake. a little bit more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh man. Um, all right. So, uh, oof, how do we even show? How do we show? I believe the first thing that we tend to talk about was our previous uh, couple of weeks. Have we, have you done any gaming, anything, right. anything exciting to talk about? Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, I mean, besides a whole lot of little games, of course, we we started uh, we started Dune Adventures in the Imperium, our yes. learn to play game, right here on Saving Throw on Tuesday nights. Uh, oh. Wow, <laughs> I mean, it was so good. <laughs> that was yeah, that was a pretty fantastic opening uh, to. Um, oh, there know, you to, go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I just switched to to my sandworm. Uh, that was that was a lot of fun. So what we're doing is Rich is running a game. Well, what we're doing, I'm participating in. Rich is running a game <laughs> of Dune. Uh, you know, a, 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 the RPG from Modiphius that we re uh, reviewed not too long ago, uh, and mm -hmm. we spent the first session um, talking about building houses and stuff. So. Yeah, right. Uh, I love this because a lot of of role playing games, right? You start with your your session zero, right? You get everyone together, cool. Get your snacks, get ready to start playing. You have to make your characters, and um, sometimes you know what you want to make. Sometimes you don't. You're looking at the other players, but there's not much of a not much of a binding principle, right? right. It's very rare that I run a campaign where it's like you're all members of the the Waterdeep House, Town Guard, whatever. You know. Um, Usually people can just be anything and it's kind of hard to to make characters with just anything, you know, anything is possible. And so building the house, I thought was a ton of fun because it really gave was. us all this framework. Right. Right. And even as as ridiculous as our house was mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, like I could still see this house functioning in the Dune universe. Kinda. I can too. Right. Uh, we, we developed the House of Posh. Um, we had a very strong Spice World theme going throughout. It was great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> very Spice Girls. Uh, Spice Girls, Spice World. That was, yeah, it was great. Um, but uh, but you were able to, like, develop these these minor houses that worked with you in different parts of, of your, like, configuration. There's, like, the farmers. You have this huge entertainment thing going, like, the, the mysterious... I, the illusionary center in the middle. Like I just have so many ideas based on just the, those ideas that you all came up with. Like, Absolutely. I love it. I love yeah, it. no, no, it's totally wild. Like, you know, it, and, and I wasn't quite I, like I was feeling it, but, but I was a little worried that we weren't going to get that little bit of like, you know, I want to say charm, but it's maybe the opposite of charm <laughs> right. that, that we needed. And then, and then we found out that we were, you know, we're secret assassins along. Well, not so secret uh -huh. assassins because our, no, you no. know, our spy master is just all up, all up in everyone's business, right? Yeah. Everyone knows it's our spy funny. master and they, they can't do anything about it. Right. I, I really like it. That little hint of, of assassination. We built our rivals and how much they hate you. Uh, you, because of course I'm not a member of the house unless I do get to be um, head chef Guy Fieri Spice, I suppose. Uh, uh, yeah, that, I mean, you know, or the, <laughs> the, leader or the of Iron world. Chef. <laughs> the Iron Chef. I also really liked the chopped, just the, the chopped, the masked figure that you talk to by title and doesn't you don't know who they are. Right. They, they move, you know, new people become the chopped eventually your yeah. sword master or whatever. <laughs> oh, so good. 
Um, wow. But uh, but I love that within that, like we built something ridiculous, right? It was huge. It was big. It was broad. Um, but there were so many niches in it where you could look at at the stories that were possible and be like, I want to build a character right here. I want to be on the intersection of these two things. Like this sounded fun. I want to be over here. Mm -hmm. And the character concepts that started coming out of it were really cool. I mean, yeah. very Dune. I mean, yeah. definitely we're, we're talking about getting some Fremen action where we're, we want the, the Bene Gesserit as part of this. Um, but they were all housed inside this framework that we had built. So I think it's going to be really fun. I think it's going to be a great team. I'm excited to start statting out our characters next time, finishing up our session zero. I have some and great I... ideas for character names. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> um, I, uh, but yeah, I think we're going to get into. Uh, we might roll some dice next time, not just session zero, but like we're, I want to get started. Um, and then we've got the the next three weeks after this are going to be all adventure all the time. So, yeah, I'm super excited. It's going to be fun. It. It's going to be fun. Uh, right here oh. on the Saving Throw so or Saving Throw channel on Tuesdays mm -hmm. at six five thirty five thirty five thirty <laughs> five thirty yeah five thirty we wanted it to be a little bit earlier because we got some East Coasters on board who oh, are right. who are playing with us so yeah yeah oh, late man. enough that we're okay <laughs> all right well um, that was some exciting gaming should we jump into news there's there's, oh, there's yeah, quite we... a bit. We do have quite a bit of news. That is true. And it might overlap with some of the other games we've been playing lately. Yeah. Um, I know I know some of the games I've been playing, we're going to do some reviews on pretty soon. So I'll keep them to myself for now. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to highlight a couple of the games that I'm planning on playing soon. So, but Very the first cool. thing I want to talk about, and, and we'll just touch on this briefly. It's something we touched on before. Uh, we, we took a little break due to the heat. Um, TSR. Uh, we're, yeah. we're to our fourth version of TSR, except only one version exists at this point. Um, and as far as I know, Ernie Gygax isn't involved, which is probably good. I, I, it's, it's hard to say. I, yeah. I've been trying to keep up on the news, but, but mostly I, I just want to keep up with it so I can know what to stay away from. Right. Exactly. This is, this is like avoidance policy. What the heck is going on? Doesn't. It sounds bad. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Um, it sounds like but, it's a hot uh, mess. So. Yeah. Which yep. is sad, but you know, like uh, I, I believe uh, who was it? it was on uh, on Facebook. Mike Salinker said, "No, we we killed TSR with the uh, 3.0." So yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, <laughs> TSR has been dead for a while, so I'm not I'm not right. too heartbroken. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the legacy Even... is still the legacy. It's you know these idiots crapping yeah. on it isn't doing anything. So. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Um, it's not like when we started talking about it, I was like, interesting nostalgia push. I'm, I'm excited. And, you know, clearly that went away. It's a good reminder that uh, I don't need all nostalgia reborn. You know, sometimes no. I can just think about it and go, ah, TSR. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Let it go. Right? Yeah. yeah. This is one of those. Just let it go. <laughs> let it go. Um, I, I have not seen any of the Frozen movies. So, but anyway, that has nothing to do with anything. None okay. Okay. Anyway, uh, it is. Now... I've seen. <laughs> I have a moment I will never forget because I saw Frozen live at Disneyland, oh, and no. uh, in the middle of it, uh, the the you know the vi the villain that we don't know is the villain the first time you meet them right is like striding through all happy and happy, and this this kid from the audience just goes hi Prince Hans, <laughs> and we laugh about it all the time. <laughs> That's a monster. <laughs> he turns into a snowman and changes his name to Olaf. That's right. Yeah. You, are you sure you haven't seen that movie? That's that's like dead on. <laughs> really? Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, what do you got for news? Oh, gosh. Where do I want to start? So uh, I did want to start with a, a bit of news that I saw. This looks like a, uh, a uh, you know, speaking of savory heaping helpings of soup, uh, a nice little food item that came out of the RPG Writer Workshop. This is a series of of like groups that are getting together, writing their first adventures. It's uh, it's run by uh, oh my gosh, um, Ashley Warren of the Storytelling Collective, and uh, it helps like get a lot of new voices out onto the DMs Guild and other places. Um, they're doing a Call of Cthulhu run, I think, right now. Um, nice. But someone posted this on Twitter. This is um, uh. Pyronide Press, um, some honeyed owl bear shanks, and I just thought this was fun as a thing to possibly give to your players. Right, this is this is a a deal that you were making with them. Right, so this is a a chance to uh, to offer them a little hint of adventure. You could try this this owl bear shank medallions, but they are not 
a small little bit of food. Oh no, these owl bear shanks are the massive meal that if you eat the whole thing in one hour long sitting, like you get your picture on the wall style stuff, right? Um, and so the in-game benefits for this, which I thought of were really fun, um, consuming this meal takes an hour. Within the hour, you have to make a DC 15 constitution saving throw. Um, if you succeed, um, you gain advantage on the first attack of each round until your next rest, long or short, doesn't what? matter. Um, which is huge, but you succeed it, yeah. right? You set right. this up as like this 20 gold major events, right? But if you fail, you become racked with stomach cramps and are considered sickened until your next long rest. Oh, and no. sickened is is brutal, right? It, you can only either move rough. or attack. Yeah. yeah, sickened is rough. I, I like that there's an eating challenge built into this. That's I so know. much fun, <laughs> right? Really funny. Those things always make me laugh. And since we've been talking about Guy Fieri a whole bunch lately. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, oh my God. That's food that, challenge. Oh wait, I should I should uninvis <laughs> Hello? me. Uh, yeah, come on back. I can't be just talking to some honeyed owlbear shanks all day. <laughs> but you could. All right. Um, no, the honey owlbear shanks. I love it. It's so good, right? Um, right. Oh man. So uh, <laughs> keep <laughs> keep keeping up with kind of more lighthearted stuff. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Harper Collins and uh, Wizards of the Coast are getting together, and they're doing some fun stuff, kind of for for middle school aged. Uh, kids, they're putting out some books. Um, I had these notes somewhere. There they are. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so they're they're teaming up with um, Hasbro and Wizard Coast have granted HarperCollins exclusive rights to publish middle-aged fiction and graphic novels tied to uh, Dungeons & Dragons. So uh, that's, that's pretty awesome. And uh, also in other news, kind of related, IDW is retaining the Dungeons & Dragons comic license. So, you know, we may be seeing some more of those as well uh, yeah. coming uh, coming up. And I and, and honestly, like I've read the 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 uh, was it Marvel who did the other Dungeons and Dragons comics? I've read those ones. I like the IDW ones a lot. Um, if you're going to read some, I think they're fantastic. Uh, and they, right. usually, they usually include really cool stat blocks and stuff in them, too. So I'm pretty into that. Yeah. I really love this uh, this middle grade book you were uh, talking about. Um. I like D and D Dungeon Academy. No humans allowed. Like I just that's already like a framework that feels so kid focused that I'm excited by. Right, playing right. something wild, out of the ordinary. Not not our, our players' handbook, Lord of the Rings zone, but like let's get out there um, and go to this magic school together because that's you know that's what we always want. Exactly. Says a person who runs a D and D Academy in a magic school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very cool. Good list nice. of people. Seems good. Yeah, it does. It it does. It's it seems very good. So, um, all right. Let's see here. What do you got now? Ooh. All right. Uh, next up, I wanted to take a look at a Kickstarter, and this is one that I first heard about from uh, on Twitter from HTT Paladin, um, who is uh, taking on some serious design work on this one. Um, this is a book called Incantations, um, which is a, a different style of D and D book than a lot of the ones I've seen. It's a book of narrative and worldly spells um, rather than running around dealing tons of damage and things this is this is trying to to build us a more interesting story through spells which i think is is pretty interesting things like how do you make a ship fly like how do you instead of doing stealth do something with uh, with the memories of the people around you to access that same sort of storytelling um it's going a little bit broader uh which i think is very very cool um is up on Kickstarter now. The uh, the pledge is, I believe, fifteen dollars for the PDF and thirty five for a hardcover. Although, wow, shipping these days is uh, is like the wild west again. So who yeah. knows what that's going to be like? Um, but this is a seventy five page book of spells, magic items, and new subclasses to give you specifically more narrative tools to add to your game. Um, things like uh, what do we got in here? Um, the doomed sorcerer, the harbinger bloodline. You have. Um, some incredible power, but the world is doomed around you as part of it, I think. Um, the school of travel for the wizard, just, you know, your wandering is what brings you power. Um, and of course, for the cleric, the supernova domain, which for me was the moment when I was like, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in here. I want to talk about creation a whole lot. Um, it seems like a really neat book. I'm excited to see more about it. Awesome. Yeah, no, that sounds that sounds really cool. I think I, I, I like any more any way to expand magic and create more story around it sounds fantastic yeah. to me. Right. Uh, um, 
there's a lot of spells. There's a lot of spells that do, you know, a bunch of damage, which is super cool. But right. sometimes our stories just don't sit on damage. And this this feels like it'll reward those kind of players. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, jumping over into kind of the um, uh, board game realm, card games, as it were. Uh, Asmodi USA has uh, revealed a game coming out that looks horribly adorable. Uh, this is called Winston. <laughs> it's a uh, Dachshund collecting card game. <laughs> and so uh, so in Winston, players try to collect the longest Dachshund they can make. The player, <laughs> they play at least two cards huh? each turn in an attempt to com uh, <laughs> complete different colored dogs. Longer Dachshunds score more points, but players also have to try to avoid ending up with the dog poo. So uh, 70 cards, a wooden bone, <laughs> and a wooden poo. So... <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is That's for amazing. ages six and up uh so it'll uh -huh. be good to play with children because there's dog poo and the whole reason i wanted to mention this game was because of dog poo so i oh. <laughs> <laughs> sure 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 <laughs> classy classy wow i like it it's got that that hint of like like rummy to it right collecting uh -huh. those sets and extending but also uh, a hot potato aspect maybe like yeah sure something like that I right yeah i don't know it looks fun uh, we uh, Aubrey and I went to to our local game store not 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 uh, not too long ago uh, or yesterday in fact. <laughs> and um, and we were just looking at kids games and so this also kind of struck a chord because we were looking for Very games cool. that we could play with like eight year olds um, yeah but yeah anyway this one would do it we know how you operate Justin <laughs> <laughs> oh, ah, <man>. excellent <laughs> um. Well, cool, cool. I, I keep digging into D and D. That's just where my brain is at, uh, you know, this summer. Uh, so I wanted to actually chat today about two products that I have seen recently that I think are pretty interesting. Uh, that would spice up your game. Uh, the first one is for DMs, right? Look, you're running an adventure. Um, it's like high level. You're worried about what kind of creatures you should put in here, and you can't decide if you should put in creatures that. And this is a Teos conversation we're going to have a little bit later as well. Um, creatures that fit the story or features creatures that are like, I don't know, a little bit more difficult, right? And so like bugbears would fit this story, but uh, your CR is more like five. Your you know, players are going to wipe the floor with any bugbears. Right. So you should crack open the Tome of Templates. Um, this book is, is basically a fifth edition version of a book that I, I remember from third ed. Um, like allowing you to play monsters at different levels, like mushing monsters together. I cannot remember what the book is called. I even searched and couldn't find it a little bit ago. Um, this gives you templates that you can add basically to anything to, to take the NPCs and monsters that exist in the game and give them a little bit more character. So for example, uh, if you want to make a death knight, death knight's pretty cool, powerful undead magic sword, stuff like that. Great. Um, but a Death Guard is what? Typically uh, not a... I mean, CR could be all over the place. Who knows? Yeah. What if you just want to make one that's a Storm Giant? You know, you need some high-level ridiculousness. Yeah. Well, take the Storm Giant out of the, the Monster Manual and then flip open this page and add this template to it. Uh, that template is going to give you... For this one in particular, this is a pretty big one, like um, additional damage immunities, new senses, magic resistance, marshalling undead to your forces some spells, some languages, things like that. It's a it's a toolbox that I think DMs have, right? right. I mean, this is not this is not a thing that that you can't do on your own for sure. But it's so simple, it's straightforward, it's right there. It's just mm -hmm. here's a way to to put these together in a in a pretty powerful way. That looks cool. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. It's a good one. It is available at the moment on DMs Guild for uh, for just under 13. Um and it gives you, uh, again, about 75 pages of these templates um, and as well, like a whole bunch of already mixed NPCs. So if you do want your Githzerai spy, there you go. You want your uh, your bugbear shadow dancer. You've got it. Um, it's pretty cool. That's cool. Check it out. That's cool. Uh, while your head may still be in uh, D&D, my head is still in Dune. Um, also, while I was at the game store trying to decide like what game I wanted to purchase next, and <laughs> uh, uh -huh. and I was looking at, at two games, I narrowed it down to this one and a game I'm going to talk about in a little bit, uh, Dune Imperium. Uh, this is a deck building, yeah, uh, worker placement game. It looks pretty good. I haven't played it, 
Uh, I don't know if you've played it, Rich, but it looks pretty good. I, 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 I love I love the both of those styles of games, and I want to see them mushed together. And if I was going to mm -hmm. make any system for what I thought do, would be appropriate for Doom, Dune, it would be a deck building worker placement game. Sure, right. So with that, there is an expansion that has just got announced, uh, the Rise of X expansion. So um, Direwolf Digital it has announced that the Rise of X is going to be popping up for the board game Dune Imperium. You're going to see fun folks like Archduke Armand Ekaz. And you're going to see mm -hmm. cool things like uh, Wind Traps and the Holtzman engine. Just cool stuff to kind of get, get added to your game. Um, it's going to be in stores 2021 holidays. And then hopefully in a, you know maybe a month or so, we'll have, a, we'll have a, at least one playthrough done so I can give a, a kind of a review. So Very uh, nice. I'm pretty excited. That is cool. I, I did play the Dune, like they re-released the old board game, oh, which yeah? is very much like a tactical miniatures battle sort of thing uh, with a ton, as I experienced, of luck involved. Like there's there's enough randomness and that randomness will like sweep your troops away. Um, it is it is very careful plotting around the world and trying to make it, but also all the houses of cool powers. Like that's a that game was too much for me. I want to try this one out a lot. <laughs> yeah, it looks it looks like a lot of fun, so. Cool. Uh, I'll let you know whenever I grab it. I like it. All right. Um, let's see. I'm hanging around in the Dungeon Masters Guild, of course, because it's what I like. I love the Dungeon Masters Guild. Um, and uh, another book that I wanted to chat about that also came out this month uh, on the Van Richten's train, right? So we had a recent guide to Ravenloft. Um, this is Van Richten's treatise on lycanthropy. Um, I have had so many of my kids lately who want to play lycanthropes. Like they want to go out into the world. They want to find a weird tiger and just be like, here's my arm. Just like, come on, let's be friends. <laughs> um, and the rules in the monster manual are clear, but also like that's a very strong power level upgrade. It's very unbalancing. You're supposed to become evil, but they don't want to be evil. They still want to play the game. Um, and uh, not enough nuance in there. This book, holy cow, is 154 pages long. It is filled with lore, which is awesome. Um, really cool stuff. Do you want to know deep down what uh, weir walruses think about uh, turning other people into weir walruses? I know, I know. Um, <laughs> here you go. Okay, There's plenty well, of options. I've, I've not even like, I've never even considered I mean, weir walruses. Going to be honest. I had to go a little farther. Going right? to be honest. But if you're hanging around in the ice flows, right, and some creature is a lycanthrope, what's it going to be? It's going to be that walrus over there, right? Or a were-polar bear. <laughs> Could be a were-bear, of course, of course. Um, I think this book is so good because it, it doesn't just go through like the different possibilities for for creatures that you could be you know related to or, or whatever. Um, it really breaks things down into the levels of the curse. Um, it talks about um, how to cure the curse. And one of my favorite lines in there is great. It's so good. They talk about, um, oh, here we go. Um, whether you should be able to cast remove curse to just like pop, lycanthropy gone. Um, and, uh, and the line is um, curing lycanthropy is a plot line, not a spell slot. And uh, yeah. they spend pages and pages outlining well, you're at phase two. You've been infected, but you haven't hit your first full moon yet or your first like, you know, beast within surging moment. So that means you still have a good chance. You got to get the like, you know, medium level of, of ingredients to save yourself and stuff like that. Like it, it turns it into a major story. It allows you to play it in a reasonable way. It also adds a new lineage so you can play a true lycanthrope like right from the start if you want to. Um, it's a it's a really cool book. Yeah. Uh, in the chat, Ooh, good CMS. Question. Good question, right? Uh, also on the topic of lycanthropes, uh, non-mammal lycanthropes, uh, like werebugs. What about them? I do remember in uh, World of Darkness, the had the uh, in, in, in the werewolf area. I'm almost ninety five percent sure there was were sharks. So oh, that's, nice. That's that's non mammalian. Uh, Fair. No insects. Uh, I will tell you this book oh, has were sharks. There we go. Yeah, we're ravens. It has we're ravens. Yeah. It is we're serpents. It has we're crocodiles. Um, and then also our fox, hyena, cat, boar. You know, I don't know if we're cat is one of our classics, but it's got, you know, the, the regular D&D classics in here as well. Nice. Um, goes through a huge uh, bestiary as well. So if you do want to create your we're raven seer, that NPC exists in here. Um, there's also specific uh, specific objects that are 
oh my gosh, anathema to specific types of creatures. I mean, it's just oh, okay. Pick that's this cool. book up if if that's your deal. If you want to tell a story where lycanthropy is involved, like this, this is a research book that you just need. <laughs> um, it is currently on the DMs Guild. It is uh, it's going to go for fifteen normally. It's ten this weekend because you're getting thirty percent off because it just came out. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, that's until tomorrow. Cool. Uh, jumping back over to board games, uh, fueled by the power of Zeo Crystal. The Zeo Rangers are the strongest fighting force ever assembled. Um, so there, <laughs> so the game I did end up buying was I ended up buying the Power Rangers deck building game, and uh, <laughs> I am yeah. very excited about this game. It's going to be ridiculous. Uh, you know, uh, my wife and I have been, been been talking about playing it. It's it's going to be good. I'm excited. <laughs> uh, and just as I bought it, a standalone expansion. So standalone, meaning you can play it by itself or you can add it to your existing mm -hmm. deck building game. Uh, Power Rangers deck building game, Zeo, stronger than before. Uh, wow. And, and you can pre-order it now for 45 bucks. I don't have a review on the game yet, but I just love Power Rangers. I, I you know, it's just, they're <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not like one of those, like, I'm not a Power Ranger super fan. I just love re my memories of Power Rangers. I gotcha, yeah. And so, yeah, like... I, I couldn't name any of them, but I do remember when, you know, the, the ranger who, who was the green ranger became the white ranger. And that's, that's about the depth okay. of my knowledge. I remember someone saying, I, I, I Zordon. And that's, that's about it. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a were ranger? Oh God, I hope so. <laughs> so that's Now it. I need to look. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so that, that, that was this. I, I, I'm just really excited about more Power Rangers stuff because it's a nostalgia oh, sure. bath for the right era of my youth. Uh, right. You know, I mean, honestly, this would probably be more targeted at my brother, but I watched these shows with my brother growing up because, you know, we're brothers. We yeah. do things like that. Very cool. Wow. My goodness. Um. Uh, I, I it, took a quick look. Sorry. No, go okay. ahead. What's anyway, up? so <laughs> and I, I, the, my last bit of news I want to just kind of talk about real quick is there are, uh, for those folks who are playing uh, Roll20, uh, playing their games on Roll20, there are safety tools built in. Uh, and these are uh, cards that, uh, it's a three card set. Everyone gets these three cards and it's keep going, it's stop, and it's slow down. So these are mm -hmm. uh, safety tools um, and, um, and, and, and it's just to things you go over in, in the slot zero, uh, you know, the keep going card is like, this is, a um, this is, this is okay. What we're doing. This is good. We're, we're okay here. Uh, then the slow down card is the yellow one. And it, it, in case you're fine right now, but if it keeps going in this dark way, maybe let's not keep going deeper. And the stop card is just like, no, let's stop it. We're done. No, yeah. we need to stop this scene and move on. I don't feel great. Um, and then there's also, so that one was specifically the um, built-in safety deck for on the VTT. There's also right. free RPG safety tools add-on from Evil Hat Games. So they've put out their own as well. Um, and they have various tools to use. I haven't looked at that one, but it's also very system yeah. agnostic. And it's it's there for folks. And I think it's I think it's a great thing, especially especially for folks who are playing with a lot of strangers online. Um, yeah. You know, it's good for, for, for your friend group, too. But you, for the most part, you know, if you've been playing with these geese, these folks for years, you have an understanding of, of what their triggers are and, and, and that type of stuff and, and, and how to be a, a considerate gamer. Uh, when you're playing yeah. online with a bunch of ran, random folk, sometimes that's not always true. Uh, I have been in games where I wish I had those cards online and mm -hmm. I don't play in those games anymore. Yeah. I really like the this the evil hat option is definitely it, it adds the X card it adds palette which is lines and veils uh, a couple other ones so a mm -hmm. lot of the major tools so if you're comfortable with those that's great um, this option one I can't remember what the system is called uh, it's it it looks like a, a big flower with petals all over the place and it has this kind of like green yellow red sort of thing um, which I think it's really really great. Um, so I'm glad they're doing this. Excellent note from the chat, right? Uh, having them, yeah. even with an established group, right? Ha doing these in part of your session zero, like, you know, maybe uh, maybe things have changed. Maybe we've just been overlooking some things. You know, these yeah. aren't a bad thing to go through with uh, with your established group as well. Just to, yeah. just to check in. 
Yeah, no, I agree. I've, I've, you know, the last campaign I started and then I think the previous one, I don't remember, but I've started, I've started doing more of a session zero talking about these kind of borders and I'm writing, I'm writing some stuff, which we'll talk about next week, probably, mm -hmm. uh, because we have some cool stuff coming up. We're going to talk about next week, yeah. but I'm, I'm, I'm working on another campaign and with it, I want to make sure to add these tools into it. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Whew. All right. <laughs> well, last up on my news list is barely news. It's speculation. It's Ooh. rampant speculation, but rampant I love it. Um, but here's the deal. Like the way that uh, the D&D has been recently, right? We get a um, some Unearthed Arcana, right? Mm -hmm. And then eventually Amazon just tells us what the book is that's coming out like the yeah. day before the announcement, right? That That's the D&D pattern. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> um, and uh, and so what I wanted to take a look at is this moment that we have right now with this book that's coming out in October. Um, we know it's coming out because the the head of Wizards, the CEO, uh, said it was happening. It's going to mm -hmm. be by James Wyatt, who also happens to be writing um, or working on the new Magic the Gathering Forgotten Realms crossover set, which is cool. And it includes a very specific card that gave uh, <laughs> on EN World uh, Parmander uh, a lot of connections immediately. He did a deep dive here. Um, the card is called the Grandmaster of Flowers. It is the legendary planeswalker that is a manifestation of Bahamut, right? Um, draconic deity of goodness. Um, we got an Unearthed Darkana earlier this year, late last year, that was about yes. dragons. Yes. And I have been excited for this book ever since right i want the dragon book i want it um this book was was or this uh this card came out and it immediately led this uh this person on the end world to to connect it to a a monastery um in uh an old old module uh called the throne of bloodstone the monastery of the yellow rose because bahamut is shown here kind of covered in these yellow roses um a whole plot line dealing with Bahamut and Tiamat and the Wand of Orcus and all sorts of connections there, um, kind of uh, in a part of the world that maybe people don't go to too often. I love the monasteries of the Forgotten Realms. Very cool mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and because James Wyatt is connected to both projects, maybe that is the moment of crossover. Maybe this will be the theme of the book that is coming out in October, is it will be this this module re-released, re remastered. Who knows? Um but what I do know is I love getting rumors and speculative ideas um, that are not just Amazon telling us what the book is. So I will continue to dig deeper until we have solved this mystery of what the book will be. <laughs> and if anyone was going to solve the mystery, it would be you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> keep it here with Ace Reporter, Rich Molina Weber. <laughs> uh, all right. So, um, you know, uh, this week for review, um, uh, we have, uh, speaking of, you know, crossovers, speaking of, of things like that. Uh, we do, in fact, we have the, uh, um, what is it? The, the new mm -hmm. adventure from Will Hindemar. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to get it up, but why don't you tell the folks a little bit about sure, it? Sure, sure. This is this is a series of adventures. There are going to be five of them. Uh, and I think we mentioned them earlier uh, on an earlier episode. Um, this first one is called In Scarlet Flames, and they're providing a storyline for folks who are engaged in Magic the Gathering and kind of want to see the D&D side of things, right? These adventures are published on uh, on the Magic website, and they provide opportunities for uh, pretty high-level play. This is eighth level um, yeah. that we get started at here. Um, there are plenty of pregens available for this, uh, of course, on the site. So the intention here seems to be you get your Magic friends, you play these Forgotten Realms cards, and you're like, I got to get me some D&D, &D, and, uh, and here you go. Yeah. Um, so this first one is the start of a series, or uh, as mentioned, you can certainly take it off in a direction of your choice. Um, but it sets up, not only like gives us an interesting exploration adventure here, but it sets up a, a villain for uh, for later on in this series, which I love already. Yeah, <laughs> there's there's a lot going on with this. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there's there's a few things. And I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm just looking for my notes. Sorry, uh, <laughs> I, I, we, we, were, we were having so much time, fun ahead of time talking with Teos that I forgot to uh, <laughs> set up the scene. So, uh, yeah. Oh. oh, man. OK, so so this this adventure is written by uh, Will Hindmarch, which we both we, we, we both know. Um, and it's a yeah, it's a fantastic. It's a mystery, right? It really feels like like right. there's a mystery in here and it's leading down that um, down that road you were talking about. 
I'm not going to pause too long, even though this is free on any of these pages, just in case there's players out there. But, yeah. uh, you know, in Scarlet Flames, this is episode one. It talks about how you can kind of fit this into play or play it on its own. It's dealing with the Red red Wizards of Thay, which is always fun. Uh, right. Yeah, right. It has some really cool um, hooks. It also uh, talks about the village of a Succumber, which is where this whole thing kind of kicks off with. Um, and yeah, it's it, the art is gorgeous. Uh, one thing I do really want to talk about is I... And a part of the reason I, I I did say this is kind of a mystery is that there are some hidden treasures within this uh with this in this adventure for the observant player, um you know and 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 not to be meta but more like my character does this type of thing and so there's a lot of kind of cool hidden aspects in in this adventure for folks who do things mm -hmm. like that, um you know uh, there's a a a a portion in here where. Uh, you can find something, and if you don't do anything with it, it's worth like twenty gold. But if you do something special with it, it's worth like two thousand gold. Right. right. So, <laughs> so you know, there's cool things like that kind of built in here. Uh, Will is a fantastic writer. Uh, mm -hmm. So going through this, I was just blown away by the descriptions and the box text and everything. Yeah. Um, and then um, also, like for eighth level, how do you challenge eighth level characters? Uh, you know, this is, I think, a discussion we're going to have a lot today is how, how do you challenge your party? <laughs> yeah. Uh, in this, I, I think this does a good job in that it is a mystery. It also has mm -hmm. a fair amount of traps, uh, which I it think does. as you get to higher levels, you can make more deadly traps and traps are fun. Um, it makes them use people use their skills more so than than combat to solve problems. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's cool. And uh, I have to say there's a a scene that has to do with a lot of fire towards the end of it. And I feel like that scene is done to perfection. Uh, I agree. I, I, I think love that's every very aspect good. of it. All right. Mm -hmm. And there you go. I have prattled on about how much I love this, this adventure. Uh, I mean, now, it's now go for it. I'm with you. I mean, even from like part one, right. Which, which you looked at the village of Sakamber. It's, it's a short, like half, uh, half of one page, right? And in that page, we are given details about like uh, a bandit leader, um, the members of their group, the fact that the, the members of those group may not be all friends, um, who they are, like the lore that they can give you, the leads they can give you. It's just, that's what I want at the start of of an adventure, right? I've got, mm -hmm. I've got so many options here. It's not just box text for three paragraphs, which is what I would do. Um, and it kind <laughs> of like, <laughs> yeah, um, it's really good. Cause it, it shows you all these options. It gives you just enough that even if we do things like I'm going to cast a tech thoughts on their minions to see what's going on. We've been provided information, <laughs> yeah. which is fantastic. Yeah. We have a lot um, of really great information in this and it's, yeah. it's sweet. I like that uh, that this is because it is meant to be an introduction. I think, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's eighth level introduction, but still, um, the uh, the story here as, is pretty linear for the most part, right? So you you meet these folks, you head out uh, onto the into the darkness in order to find this uh, this ridiculous place that you were going, the Wizard's Barrow, um, and uh, it's not a static place. That's another thing I like about this is when you yeah. play it. Um, you actually, as the DM, kind of need to track what's going on because things can change in here, which I think is a very difficult thing to write. And like you said, it's done very well in here. There's a lot of layers about what's happening, and it could make it for a very fun op or very fun adventure. Uh, there's even a section that talks about like, who, what happens if stuff just goes like totally wild? Because <laughs> um, yeah. it can, it yeah. really, really can, like just yeah. pile up. But it's a it's a very cool adventure. Yeah, one section uh, I do I, I do love is is I love the uh, I love the what's next section, um, yep. because that's something that I don't see in in a lot of adventures is like here is a couple of hooks as to where you can go from here or how to mm -hmm. like connect it to the next adventure. I I kind of love that. I I think that's something fun, and I I haven't seen it in a lot of published adventures. But Great. granted, most of the ones I read are going to be from. Um, Oh man, uh, the Adventures Guild anyway. So oh, there we go, Adventures League. Yeah. <laughs> man, Adventures League. I, I had so much in my head right there. Uh, but yeah, no, it's a really solid adventure. Uh, part two is out now. Uh, there's gonna yes. be five parts. Each part's gonna come out in a week, and a week after, and I'm gonna be trying to wrangle uh, Will to get on the show. Oh, right, right. And for folks who are watching the stream, it seems like something weird is going on, uh, and I apologize about that. But hopefully, that'll get sorted out soon. Uh oh. 
yeah, it's doing something real weird over there. But, <laughs> or at least on my screen. I don't know. Maybe maybe no one else is having the same issues as I am. So I can't see anything, but you know, I'm looking at a weird screen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nope, they're not saying Thanks, anything. Though. It's me. Caffeine effects. Uh, that's true. I did just feel finish my tea. So oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, so this is interesting. I mean, uh, I keep thinking about this, uh, and as I was looking at uh, at other folks talking about it, one of the things they they mentioned is like, you know, who is this for? Um, this is I, I don't know that it's for a a brand new like I wouldn't send my my youth groups, you know, my my young kids through this one because it's eighth level. I mean, that's this stuff is dangerous in here, but it is for folks who want to get that sense of danger, I think, out of it. And I think honestly, Magic the Gathering players with all the all the tricks, all the all the tapping, all the mm -hmm. you know, all the stuff you got to do there. If you're ready for some from high level content, this is a, a very fun approach, and I would recommend jumping into it. Yeah, I'm 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 super excited about it. Um, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, what time? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, you know, one thing I did touch on briefly: the art's fantastic. Uh, there is some really cool artists involved. Oh, weird. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. All right. Sorry, I'm, I'm having some weird technical things over here, but I think I got it all sorted. We're good to go. Let's continue onward. Uh, the recording is going to be fantastic. Uh, but yeah, there's <laughs> some there, there's some really cool people involved with this. Um, you know, we've we've mentioned Will. Uh, oop, I was looking at the wrong part, so I don't want to name the wrong artists. Uh, we're doo -doo -doo, uh, we're seeing uh, the uh, graphic designer was Bree Heiss. The illustrators are Alana Danner, Bram Sells. Uh, Kafis Zelinska. These are all folks who who we've seen in other products. So uh, they're not they're not pulling punches when they've they've they're gotten folks to do these. So right, right, yeah. Right. This is this is pretty exceptional free content. Definitely check it out. And even if you don't want to run all five of them, like this is a good way to to start an adventure and go off to who knows where with a cool villain that we won't tell you about until you see it for yourself. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> So cool. Um, all right. Well, uh, it looks like our guest is ready in the green room. Um, and so we'll jump over there a little bit early. Uh, I did want to cool. say I am going to be talking about the new Magic Gathering Forgotten Realm set. I've done three drafts so far. I'll probably do maybe two, two to three more. Um, and uh, and then I'll, I'll talk about it next week. So uh, but with cool. that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and step out of my chair for a second and pass it on over to Teos. And uh, welcome, you welcome. <laughs> Teos, welcome hello, to Elder hello. Soup. Hello. <laughs> how are you doing? It is uh, now that I know how long it takes to eat an owlbear, uh, I know not to eat an owlbear. <laughs> yeah, an hour is just a little too much. It's a oh lot of gosh. work, I think. Yeah. What did we have? Um, this last week we had I had kids who had uh, beaten a carrion crawler. They were like, cool, we're going to cut that up and we're going to make steaks out of it. Um, and then like found a, a black dragon wormling and they were like, great, just more steaks. Let's do this. <laughs> um, and so they just carried them back and just started cooking and had a big feast. They didn't let anyone else eat any of it. It was just for them. <laughs> Everything is that now doesn't... edible. I see what kind of campaign yeah. you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's awesome. Got to use, I, I do love use it when all kids parts. get interested in, in doing things like that. It's awesome. Right? Oh, my gosh. Well, um, I'm so glad we have you back on. It's it's uh, It feels like it hasn't been that long, but I think it has, actually, uh, since the last time you were on. But, um, of course, we were just on Dune together less than a week ago, so that helps. <laughs> that was so good. I still yeah. have a little bit of sand in my hair. I'm, like, trying to get it out. You know, it's just... Mm -hmm. It's it's never going to go away. That's the problem. No. <laughs> There's always a, a little bit of sand left. Um, yeah, I thought that was a lot of fun. And I know we talked about it earlier, but uh, um, you came. One of the reasons I wanted to have you on it for sure is, well, I mean, because you're you. But uh, but also, I know you you have this focus on um, on the environment and and we you, you post about it quite a bit. And Dune is a, a setting that talks a lot about the environment as well. So. Uh, I like that connection there a lot. Yeah, thanks. I I mean, it, it's one of the things that's super cool is is that it's 
the the novel, especially really all of them, but the first one especially hits you with how it's written with an ecological mindset and idea yeah. idea towards the life cycle of things, towards what a planet's balance is about. It's just really cool themes that are that mm -hmm. permeate into all the aspects of the storytelling, which is so cool. So cool. Right. Um, and I know you have done a lot of Dark Sun as well. Um, I think it goes, Dark Sun shows us the the strangeness of a world where we're just not going to get that stuff back. I mean, try as you like preservers, but it's just not going to work. Um, yeah. But I, it, it takes it, I think, from a magical viewpoint and seeing it like really rooted in ecology and science in, in Dune is pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, and, and Dune isn't so much that it's been destroyed, right? It's like as far as we know, the planet has never seen rain, and uh, mm -hmm. and and it's more that there's, you know, how does this work? It's that question of how is the world so lethal? How does right. it work? And as you get into it, you hear these little stories of like, well, maybe maybe some people know some things, right? And 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 all of yeah. it has this ecological mindset, which is super sweet. Love that. <laughs> I've just been rereading. I did watch the movie. We we talked about that recently. Um, <laughs> but I've been rereading and I, I got to this moment um, where, where it was like, I think it's uh, it's Jessica very quickly is like, it's got to be here somewhere. Like, where isn't there? Where's the water? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah and, I mean, that's I the cool it. thing of real deserts. And, and I am a nerd when it comes to ecology. Like, I, I think the first it's probably the first collaborative project I ever did. Um, and long before I did any writing or anything like that was, uh, through the, the dark sun list server. This is how old I am. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I started working on the net librum of a Aphasian ecology and it took a bunch of stuff that I'd learned in my ecology classes and turned it into this analysis of, you know, how does dark sun work ecologically? And uh, then we created creatures for it with a, a bunch of folks and, you know, collaborate. It was pretty fun. That's amazing. That's wonderful. <laughs> well, very cool. Um, well, uh, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on in particular is because you've recently written this series of articles that spoke to me. Um, like when you mentioned you were going to write them, I was so excited because uh, I, I, I run a lot of D&D. &D, and <laughs> one of the classic yeah, problems do. is... How do you challenge your players without destroying your players, right? I mean, we we know we can make the game too easy. We know we can easily make it too hard. But if our job is to provide that balance, right, that lets, lets us have some tactical moments, you know, create drama, create tension, um, that, that can be really difficult. Yeah, and, and, and when I wrote this series, the way I first looked at it was just thinking through the idea that it's something that you hear a lot and, and read a lot about on like forums and, and, you know, Reddit and you name it, where DMs will just say like, I am struggling with my players. My players are walking over everything. And when I started sharing this series, person after person came forth to sort of say, yeah, everything's a cakewalk for my players. And I have no idea what to do about mm -hmm. it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, it's a thing that, uh, I mean, in home games, absolutely. It's a thing I noticed from organized play, of course. Right, because someone's writing that for for all sorts of, of folks, and and we get you know we always talk about oh them optimizers you know they're they're ruining you know they're not <laughs> just playing a game yeah. Um, yeah but uh, but but it seems like there is this idea that the game can challenge some fourth level players and totally underwhelm other fourth level players um, and uh, you know, coming up with a set of solutions, which is what you've done here, is is great. <laughs> like, you know, looking Thanks. at it first of all, but but delving into those solutions, it's what we need. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I wanted to look at it first as a sort of like higher level, you know, what is going on here and, and why why it might not be nuts to say, hey, I feel like I can't keep up with my players. And so the first thing I looked at was hit points versus average damage of a monster. Yes. And <laughs> and if you and if you just look at like what the to hit value is of a monster and you look at the damage output of it at any particular CR that's appropriate for a certain level of characters and you mm -hmm. look at how many hit points the party has it's going to take those monsters a really long time in terms of the number of rounds to take down the party. And obviously we're not trying to actually take down the party. We're just trying to make it feel right. kind of hard. But mm -hmm. but if you just think of like what it would take to kill to defeat, right? To TPK it's kind yeah. of 
almost inc incredulous, right? Like you, you just, you, that's how you feel because you just, it's not possible to really take down many parties. <laughs> and so if it's uh -huh. not possible to have a TPK, how are you supposed to make them feel challenged, right? And, and there are some ways and all that, but just that's sort of the core thing that I looked at in the first piece was just, yeah. you know, the, the hit points versus damage doesn't quite uh, add up as, as a just sort of right. basis. And then I went and looked at monster construction rules, right? Because the the DMG has guidance that tells us what a monster should look like when we build one. And yeah. that gets into the sort of the first of my solutions, but to, to kind of get to the solution, I wanted to talk about the problem. And, and the sort of problem <laughs> is that if you look at mm -hmm. the, what, it, what the DMG recommends, and then you look at the actual monster books and you average out the damage of those monsters, it, it seems like what the designers do is they trade off damage for other things. Yeah. Such that the damage is almost always under and, and on average is significantly under what you would expect at a certain CR. And that doesn't mean it should be one way or the other, but but it's just interesting to note the damage sort of seems to mm -hmm. be traded off all the time. And and I and I think you know, when I talk to other fellow designers, like folks, I'm talking about folks who've written hundreds of monsters, right? Who've written official work and yeah. stuff. It's interesting because they all kind of go, Yeah, I don't really think it should be that way. Like I, I think, I think they should deal more damage. Like that, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. um, so I put up, you know, what I think is kind of interesting in terms of this this comparison of of the actual damage versus the uh, expected damage, if you will, and and you can see sort of what these are, these values at different uh, CRs, and and it's pretty noticeable. So like at, at you yeah. know level eight, the range of damage should be like fifty one to fifty six around. And it tends to be more like 40. So you're somewhere between 11 right. to 16 hit points of damage per round low per monster, right? That you might mm -hmm. use at that CR. Um, but at level, you know, or CR 20, you get with a difference of 23 to 40 under. And that's amazing. If you think of like some really cool wow. devil or demon that's a CR 20 creature, like this thing's supposed to be so scary. And it might be dealing 40 hit points of damage less than the DMG says a monster should deal. And that's big, right? And so that's huge. So wow. my, <laughs> it's huge. It's just it's it's enormous. Right. Yeah. And so like and, and so if, you know one thing I said is like if your encounters with three CR twelve creatures, your encounter is off by 45 to 60 points of damage each and every round of combat. Right. And that's kind of like, you know, you're getting into like fireballs of damage worth of not having right it's as if you had a wizard right, yeah. cast fireball huh? against the party every round um yeah you just you have a character damage who's just 66 do, do, do. <laughs> you know not doing anything yeah. yeah interesting that's a cool way to think about it because it's yeah you know it's just the the th it the threat is not there if someone's standing to the side you know just waving waiting their turn or whatever um but, and it feels like that it, i mean it's built like that even though it, it doesn't need to be so yeah. I love it. I feel like because first level, I usually put up against CR2 monsters and that feels like a bugbear. Holy cow. <laughs> bugbear can take out yeah. any first level character with a single hit. And we get this feeling that the game is going to be dangerous. But you hit second level and like poof. <laughs> um, well, and that's we're off and running. We're like safer the, now. <laughs> the the lowest CR is like one and, and below. So one, mm -hmm. one half, one quarter, one eighth, zero. They all deal more damage than the average would expect. <laughs> Yeah, right. CR two is between zero and five under hit points, so it's pretty close, right? And then from then on, the yeah. gap just grows. Uh, oh so gosh. not only is it already that you have fewer hit points and it's a little more deadly, but the monsters are actually hitting around where you'd expect, or, or even a little over. Um, mm -hmm. So, so my first recommendation in this second blog post was just add damage, and that yes. if in doubt, if you, if and the first <laughs> thing is to think, you know, do I want this fight to be challenging? Because if you don't, and there should be some fights that aren't, then you're all Wait. good. Right, the, the system built in an easy <laughs> button for you. Uh, but if you <laughs> want to make it a little harder, add one to two dice of damage, yeah. and that basically means you just look at the attack. And I think this is a fairly simple thing. Where if you look at the the, the attack and it does say two d eight, you know, great. I'm going to try three d eight, and so I might mm -hmm. start my battle like that, dealing three d eight with all my monsters, and then I might go, you know, they need a little extra, and I might talk about how they whip themselves into frenzy, and right. now they're doing four d eight right instead of the original two d eight. 
And if you do average damage, then you just take, well, the average of 2d8 is 9, so I'm going to add 9 to my static damage, and I can just do that. Um, but I find that's a pretty simple thing and generally works pretty well. The high CRs, you know, you're not adding as much as you could compared to the DMG, yeah. but it's usually a pretty good way to do it. And you could always go to three, you know, dice or something, like that. but but honestly, one to two dice works pretty well for uh, for initial rounds. And, and it's interesting, I had a couple of people write back that, who said, um, I tried this this weekend and it was great. Like the party still won, but they felt it. Like they, they were like, oh, that hurt. Uh -huh. <laughs> my, my character mm -hmm. had to watch out. And, yeah, and, which got a rest. Point, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're not trying to kill yeah. the players or their characters. You're just trying to give them a little feel. You know, a little you know, hit them hard enough that you know you're, they, they rub their jaw. Right, and I, I think it's really good because there's as I look at the game, there's kind of a couple ways to change it. I mean, I know that there's styles of play. I often play a very Nova focused set of adventures. Mm -hmm. So, um, so when they get to a combat, they can go wild because they're not expecting three more combats today. So the solution to just, well, put more combats in a day, they have to conserve their resources, that lowers their damage output, is an answer. And I, I totally, you know, that's fine, but it doesn't help me with my game because um, that's just not how my narratives are often set up. So I love this as a way to just, you know, to just push and, and challenge the players that way. Um, I saw you mention specifically, don't change like AC, don't change... Uh, you know, you like this option more than just like, let's armor everybody or let's make that so they hit all the time. Yeah, and I asked a few other DMs that I that run a lot and, and they seem to sort of agree. And, it, and it's not that, you know, you may find your own style and it's totally cool. Yeah. But, but I think in general for most DMs, when you get into say adding AC or even hit points, that lengthens the combat. And my right. personal preference is I don't care how long the monsters die. In fact, it's totally cool if they die really quickly, but I want them to leave an impact while they're there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's where if they hit for damage, you know, again, we're fine with our characters surviving. That's, we're not trying yeah. to, to destroy them. Uh, <laughs> but if they hit hard enough that, that the character, the, really the players kind of go, oh, and register it, that's the win, right? They felt challenged. Right. Um, on, on top of the other things, and it's always important to say that that your combat shouldn't just be about, you know, there is an Etten in a room and it hits hard. Uh, yeah. Ideally, there's an Etten in a room that has, I don't know, really interesting things like a bunch of kobolds assembling a trap to fire it at, at you and they have to be stopped mm -hmm. and the Etten is ordering them on to do it. Uh, yeah. And the Etten has two heads and they have personalities, right? Like that's, yeah. that's the stuff that really pleases players is some kind of neat thing that's going on in the situation. Yeah, uh, but but we do want to give them an impact every now and then when that when that right. Etten hits. Like, there's nothing more disappointing. Like, some Etten hits the character, and it's like five points of damage or something. Like, yeah. no, <laughs> it needs to right. it needs to feel big. Like, I do not want that Etten to hit me again. Mm -hmm. um, and and especially because that that. yeah, that's a, that feeling also changes the game, right? I mean, there's suddenly it's it's not just. Ooh, these monsters are are terrifying. You, you like players gain this sense of pity almost. Like, wait, you only did five damage. Oh, you're so cute. Like, let's just talk to you and be friends. And it can totally change <laughs> how your encounter, how you had planned the entire session to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Goblins, do you need some help with that trap? We can set it up for you, and then we'll stand right. over here. We swear you can still fire it at us. <laughs> right. We don't even care because you can't possibly hurt us. And yeah. Yeah, and that's that's the worst. And I've certainly played uh -huh. some, uh, you know, games in like organized play situations at conventions, yeah. one shots, things like that, where you you just feel bad for the DM because you realize there is nothing in this encounter that could harm you. Just yeah. you know, even playing it straight up, right? You're not doing any mm -hmm. shenanigans. And then you know what my third post gets into is if you yes. do shenanigans, <laughs> whew, right? Then it all falls yeah. apart. Right. And uh, and that is is such a good breakdown of kind of like some very, very classic pitfalls of like just I mean, I don't even want to call them over optimization because some of them are just straightforward options <laughs> like, um, uh, you know, you mentioned um, I, I certainly remember one of our encounters. Ooh, the the huge sphinx that's chained to the wall, and as it moves forward, the doors open, and so you know, and they cast plane shift in like the first moment, and that was that. <laughs> yeah, that was that fight. Yeah, um, yeah, and I mean, and that's it, it's funny because players are doing what they they think they should, which is mm -hmm. to be clever, right, and use the right. best tool for the job. 
And spells like banishment or hypnotic pattern are the best tools for the job often. They are. And but what <laughs> but what happens is from an encounter construction perspective, right? Like if I create this encounter that say has, you know, uh, some kobolds that are fooling with a trap, but they're not really a threat. It's just sort of a fun part, aspect to it. But the real tough part is this Etten, and this Etten's just going to hit you so hard. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. If you cast banishment on that Etten, uh, my yeah. Etten goes away. And what I now have is that the math of that encounter is, is absolutely pathetic, right? It's Right. It is impossible for with that math, with that experience point value that's remaining in the encounter, I cannot challenge you. Right. It's right. so far off. And and that's what those spells do. Same thing with hypnotic pattern, with any of those major effects like that. Even counter spell and, and pieces like that or high AC, they 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 counter one or more monsters to the point where the math fundamentally breaks down for the game and no right. challenge is possible. And, and, I, and again, the players are coming in at it smart, except that they're not here just to win, especially to win at a math game. What they're here for yeah. is a fun <laughs> experience, right? Yeah. And that's where the, 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 the thing kind of crashes and locks up and the system, you know, springs gaskets is because mm -hmm. it's so smart and f kind of that moment is fun of casting banishment, seeing the end pop off. Yeah. But we're left with no challenge whatsoever. And, and if they do that all the time, right? Like if several of the yeah. characters have banishment or if everybody has counter spell, if everybody, you know, those things, uh, if we all have high ACs, then it just will all, it'll, it'll completely break down. And it's not right. that it has to necessarily just be about optimization, but it's just simply that, that the game can't function the way it's intended to. And so a lot mm -hmm. of it is for a DM to recognize these things. And it's good to understand what it means, right? Like if you have a high AC character or two or three yeah. that really can make it so that you're never hitting them, what that does to the math of the encounter is significant because essentially they are locking down one or more monsters to where no damage is dealt from them. It's as, it's as if they don't exist. And, yeah. and that's a fundamental thing. Or if you have creatures that are supposed to deal big amounts of damage through spells and those are going to get counterspelled always, that's not going to work. Right. And so you have mm -hmm. to think through this and, 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 and how to address it. So I try to talk yeah. about those things or summoning, which is one of my least favorite parts of the way 5e was initially written. Yeah. Right? yeah. If you just you, summoning brings up a number of hit points that is impossible to chew through for almost any number of, of <laughs> monsters at almost any right. CR. And, and they also deal a ton of damage and they lock up the entire battle so nothing can move around. <laughs> and it couldn't mm -hmm. be worse, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they really, uh, really get in the way. Absolutely. Um, plus, there's so many options, like tactical things come up. Like, can I, you know, talking about, oh, no, 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 your summon, you go first, your summon goes after. I want to ready for my, oh my gosh, so many things that just occur as you have two players under your own control, basically. I mean, it's, it's, a, yeah. it's a lot. Um, it it's interesting sorry go ahead <laughs> no just it slows the game so much if, yeah. especially if you gotta you know, look up the stats right the more you yeah. cast the spell you gotta look up the stats and then you gotta get the minis and and oh all of it yeah. <laughs> no thank you it's it's really interesting because i mean we i love lots of, of role-playing games but dnd is is one i play so much and you know, when you have those conversations at the start, when when you have a group that is interested in exploring the game, the game plays how we kind of expect it to. And the more experience, the more you look at like, hold on, that that worked last time. I'm going to dig into that. Like the game kind of, yeah, it, it reaches that level of just like, oh, come on. <laughs> we got to, you know, everything needs to be like someone mentioned in the chat, CR one or two higher than than I would expect. I got to attack on a bunch of damage, you know. Um, so I do, I do. I mean, I love these fixes because they're they're super positive. Um, they're going to help you keep away from building a death trap that counters everything because you also don't want to be in the position where um, the our next monster is an animated can opener. You've got a high AC; it's coming after you, and it's just going to cut your armor apart. You know, we don't want a rust <laughs> monster. Um, <laughs> Right. Yeah. And, that, and that sometimes so. you see that where folks will say, well, if they have a high AC, you know, just give them lots of saving throws. And like, yeah, but that can't work. Every, you can't do that every battle, right? You can't. Yeah. <laughs> you, you have a high AC spell, never attack your AC, it isn't it? And, and, and what this comes down to, you know, many DMs have no problem whatsoever with the game. Mm -hmm. um, 
either because they're experienced or they have a, a, a you know an ability to assess the the situation and come up with things quickly you know whatever it is but but that is i would say those are unusual skills and congrats to those dms but yeah. for a lot of dms what actually happens and especially new dms is they just become really frustrated and they think dming is hard and not fun right yeah and, and the players aren't trying to create that effect ever at the table, right? And then they right. may be just like, hey, I found out how to make a really high AC. Isn't this great? You know, I found a spell yeah. that lets me stop another spell. This sounds awesome. They, they don't I'm the best to knight. Yeah. crush you. <laughs> yeah. 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 I can cast shield and my AC is 40. Woo. Right? I did it. I meant, you know, that's so successful. And so, yeah, if you yeah. just set up counters, then you're also not letting them, you know, feel the personal fulfillment of having done the thing, you know, I know <laughs> it's getting in our way as DMs, but also like the player's happy when they can't get hit. Right. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah there, totally. there's so and, much and to dig into. I, oh, wow. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. I, I wish the rules had addressed that at the very beginning, right? You go back to the DMG and it talks about, you know, creating encounters. Uh, you know, I wish that part had been worked through a little more to look at, at what what it hinges on and to provide advice around it. Um, like I so yeah. love the the level to which uh, Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, you know, a very recent book, shows the level to which the writers thought about all of the impacts, right? Safety tools, they thought about yeah. um, how to create the story angle. They really guide the experience for the DM, how to create a domain, a dark load, any of that. Mm -hmm. um, but back in the DMG, I think there they just wasn't the same level of effort to think through what the DM needed. Um, right. It's a bit of a shame right. and it makes it hard on the DM. Yeah. Well, also the monsters in that book in Van Richten's guide, like I, I think I mentioned uh, at one point I brought out, I think it was the Relentless Slasher. And that is a creature with impact. <laughs> That's two rounds of terrifying. And it was very, very good. <laughs> Oh, that's I, what i'm looking for creatures like that i mean like like a the whatever the largest shark is like it does like 40 damage with a bite or something like that mm -hmm. and you know when you're in an aquatic environment and that thing attacks you and does that kind of damage everybody wakes up the entire table right. not just the person the, their character was just dealt that too they're just like <laughs> okay we need to take care of that thing exactly uh, and I love that, that kind of that, that tactical bit. I just, I, I need out of D and D. So monsters like that are always good for me. Um, and uh, your overall advice of adding, adding an extra die or two to damage, I think is going to significantly help out with making threats feel like threats and not, uh, not pets, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Yeah, that's one of my big things, yeah, you know, and that's what I really look for is I want to see that the characters, you know, periodically will want a short rest and that they'll think mm -hmm. about, well, my character took some hits back then, you know, like, can someone talk right. me off? And that's great. Right. That's all yeah. you really want is for them to feel the world is dangerous and they're heroes, right? right. They're we're not just, yeah. it's not a simple, easy <laughs> world. You just waltz through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think making sure that you are, are challenging them, giving them those moments of, Oh no, I'm scared rather than, you know, this week, three of you died next week. I'll see if I can get the whole set. <laughs> You know, that's that's not how I want to play. Um, but yeah, I, I want him to be like, can we take a short rest, please? <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. And, and it well, is nice if players can think through what they're doing. Right. And, and if you mm -hmm. can create that conversation with them to where they, they show some restraint. Right. Like, like yeah. I've sometimes said as a player to other players at the table, you know, what if next fight we just see what it can does? before right. we banish it or hypnotic <laughs> pattern. Like, let's just, let's see if we need that. Like, maybe we don't, and you can use some of the other spells you don't usually use, you know, and, right. and get a right. feel for it. And because I want to know what these creatures do. And that's definitely something that happens to me as a designer when I play. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to experience yeah. the encounter this person dreamed up. And if we right. obliterate it before it even gets to go, I, then I, mm -hmm. you know, I don't get to experience it. Yeah, absolutely. My goodness. Um, uh, from the chat, I think there's little more rewarding if you have new players come up with incredible and creative way to deal with challenging foes, right? I and absolutely, uh, I think it's it's fantastic, you know. Uh, and the first time a new player is like, is it gonna work? I'm gonna you know reach out and uh, and cast this uh, this spell to take care of the problem. I love it yeah. when a, a cleric casts hold person for the first time. So good yeah. when it works. Yeah. They figured out it's a humanoid. It's gonna happen. Um, you know, the twelfth time. <laughs> 
and, just, and, and creative things, right? That that aren't necessarily yeah. the most optimal thing. But I, you know, I want to climb onto that, uh, you know, yes. chandelier and do this <laughs> thing. And then, what yeah. if I, you know, don't fireball them, but I fireball the ceiling? What would that do? You know, like, let's find out. Right, like, that's one. Yeah, I love that. Kind Standing. Of thing. Role playing is good. <laughs> well, very cool. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, anyone at home, I mean, if you were listening, if this has been interesting, you've got to check out alphastream.org. This series of blog posts has been fantastic. And you go so in depth into your your reasoning for these. It's just it's a very worthwhile look into game design and D&D in a very like, you know, in a very mechanical way, but with so much heart behind it at the same time, you know? <laughs> um, Thanks, Rich. I and, appreciate that. Of course. And I mean, your blog is filled with amazing things, um, including a little bit about Dune recently. I read it. That's right. <laughs> read it as soon as it came out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, perfect. And a little bit about the new magic set, which uh, we've we're talked about. We're going to continue to be excited about. It's going to be fun. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to have that thing yeah. on, you know, in my hands and right feel the, the <laughs> resistance of each wrapper as i pull on it and it gives way and it's been so long treasure oh, it's can't been wait. so long <laughs> yeah. all right well we are going to jump over to a little bit of an adventure design so we need to get justin back on board there you are i'm glad you were there <laughs> yeah i uh I'm talking to nothing <laughs> yeah i mean it would have been it would have been bad had i not been here to hit the button <laughs> uh <laughs> oh wow I, I yeah, but it, no, I'm I'm super excited about the the, the Forgotten Realms D and D set. It looks, uh, I mean, I've played a little bit of it because I've been playing drafts. It's it's so much fun. It's it's wild. The uh, the dungeon cards are fantastic. It's such a fun mechanic. I'm so into it. Anyway, cool. I got to check it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we're here to write an adventure. Um, Oof. you know, I I didn't really feel like there was any strong themes. Uh, coming through this this week, so we don't we don't have anything just really standing out. Um, but the one thing I could grab onto is an uh -huh. eating competition. <laughs> <laughs> just dig right back into those. Uh, what were they? Uh, glazed owlbear shanks. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that's a, a horrible idea. I kind of love it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Right, let's do. This. I like. I love contests. Is this an opener? Is this a finale? Like, whoa. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I got to try to move stuff around on pages. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Um, there yeah. you go. I would be sad if uh, if definitely, you know, this is a cool ability. We, we this, uh, this ridiculous, you get advantage on, like, everything for a while or your first attack every round. If this was uh, just the finale, because you get a benefit you won't use. <laughs> yeah, good point. Uh, opening, opening scene. Uh, opening scene. Opening scene. The annual um, uh, exploration society. Oh. Oh. Eating competition. Okay. It's just. <laughs> oh, I like it. It's like uh, it's like right now. What we've got the NBA finals going on, and uh -huh. uh, like on July fourth, if you checked ESPN or whatever, they were like. Hot dog eating champion, it wins a new record. And I was like, what's going on? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've That's got an eating intense. competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, exactly. We have an eating competition. This is what's kicking it off. Um, in our, in our, our party, uh, they are all in the finals. And they are going up against, uh, you know, last year's winners. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I like that. Join the eating competition. Yeah. So what uh, you're saying is the stakes are high. So Ooh, is that that needs to be the title? <laughs> the stakes are high. <laughs> oh, I like it. Um, you're right, because last year's winners. I mean, those are some real heroes around here in the exploration society. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna have to work hard if we want to actually win this thing. <laughs> yeah. So how are we going to raise the stakes? Oh, raising the stakes. Mm. Oh, that's mm. very good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, the stakes, the <laughs> the stakes and hosts couldn't be higher. What? No. Um, <laughs> All right, so uh, they are in the fight. Our opening, so Teos, this is kind of like the 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 car jumping off a cliff opening scene, right? Opening scene. Right. The party sat at the table, and they're sitting face to face with the opposing party. Uh, yeah, I like okay. that. Sitting face to face with the opposing yeah. party, the former champions. Uh. The heroes of the society. I mean, I, I was just immediately going to bring up the list of all of the NPCs available uh, from Saving Throw. <laughs> Led um. by Chef <laughs> Albert D. Oh my gosh. There's so many folks there. <laughs> this is good. Yeah. Now, I... I'm seeing this in terms of like, we're sitting around the table, right? And we have our champion, right? I mean, I, I don't know if if, uh, if all the players are going to be eating this ridiculous meal or uh -huh. if they can just be like back, like cheering on in the background. <laughs> We've oh, got our know. hype team slapping our, our champion on the shoulders like, you can do this. Come on. <laughs> I, I think it's fun if everybody's interacting in some way, and maybe it's like a, a, a relay competition, right? So you have one person, Ooh. and they get the smallest meal, and the meals get bigger and bigger and bigger as uh, as it gets towards the end. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, interesting. Yeah, and it our, could even our... be. Um, I like that thought. Like maybe where you are in the order of things. Uh, drives what skills you're using, right? Like maybe you yeah. know, early on, you can sort of pick and choose what you're eating, and it could mm -hmm. be about like perception, and I don't know various things like that. But then later, it may be more like endurance based, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. You're going for the choice cuts up front, you know, and then later, it's just like, can you make it through the gristle? Right. You know. It, so yeah. So like early on, <laughs> like you could add perception, uh, but these I think always, always able to. Uh, roll con and wisdom, right? Checks. Because I think all the way to the end, right? You know, wisdom checks, like even in the biggest one, I think you could get away you, you justifying that. Uh, sure. But con or wisdom, so that it doesn't necessarily have to be the pi person with the highest con score. Um, mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, and then, oh, and also, uh, let's see, uh, sleight of hand. Right. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's true. To, <laughs> oh, so to, just the old feed it to the dog and fling yeah. it over your uh, shoulder. And exactly. Uh, right. You know, so round one gets like perception as a bonus skill. Mm -hmm. Round two, you know, gets something else. You might also be able to like get a, a read on your opponent somehow. Like, um, there we go. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't know. You know, you could insight to see what their uh, what their strategy strat strategy or their strength or weakness is. Yeah, uh, PCs you... with the uh, cooks uh, utensils proficiency. Mm. Uh, yeah, maybe they absolutely. get a uh, maybe they get uh, to use advantage once per you know competition or maybe they <laughs> maybe maybe since it's such a weird like thing that people don't normally take. <laughs> They just get advantage across the board, right? I like it. I, I love the idea that they're only they, going to be partaking in, in one. Yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> they look down at like a butter knife that they've got for cutting these owl bear steaks. It's very much yeah. like that's not a knife, and they pull yeah. out like their huge chef's <laughs> knife ready to go. Yeah, oh, that's a knife. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, we don't want that's your long swords. Too. We want your your very sharp chef's knife for this. Yeah. <laughs> And it's nice to always give players a little latitude to do some wacky stuff. Like, you know, maybe they want to try to poison their opponent's meal, right? With yeah. a poisoner's oh, yeah. Like, there can always be that sort of, uh, and, and it might be that what you do is, is to allow for that, you can have like, um, that maybe at the beginning, there's some fanfare of each round where the, the each, uh, yes. both the NPC and the PC get to sort of like maybe showboat or talk or whatever. And that's a time when people may, might be focused that allows you to have some subterfuge happen there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I and love maybe this. Maybe even the crowd oh. could cheer you on if you win them over. Right. Yeah, no, uh, I love that too. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, crowd gets in it. 
I, I like the flow of they, you know, we're, they're sitting face to face against their opponents. Then we go to flashback of the other rounds in box text or something. Nice. Oh, and I then, like that a lot. And then, uh, you know, and then, um, uh, yeah, and then uh, when each each person goes, like on round one, you know, they get their one check, but they uh, those who aren't eating. Uh, uh, can aid with uh, charisma checks to Ranked. rally the crowd mm -hmm. or I don't know other checks to rally the eater mm -hmm. uh, distract the opponent yeah because I'm playing the, the elf here who maybe I'll eat a salad in the first round and then I'm just up for hype the rest of the time that's my deal yeah. I mean this this eating thing is so gauche, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> if I must, um, <laughs> right. salad doesn't have to. Right. Oh, true. Yeah. Um, so I love this having these these other options for them to do to join in. So I really like that. Yeah, you know, like getting it. in there. I mean, so tournament, so tournament, it's so good. <laughs> and the flashback could be when you do checks to assess the other team and and sort of better learn what order to go into. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, flash packs will have skill checks built into them. Oh, skill check checks. Skill checks to give insight about the competition and the rules and how they can be stretched. Well, this is good. I, I don't want to step on on the toes of anyone who may or may not have written any adventures based on, on cooking competitions. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, one of the things I love about Iron Chef uh, and shows like that is the the mystery ingredients. I love the idea that maybe each round has something, something special, and like our rogues might actually want to go find out what it is. Like, can you sneak back there and discover the mess, the magic ingredient for round four? <laughs> oh yeah, uh, and maybe 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 there's a portion of the round of each round where the eaters have to guess what the secret ingredient was for more points. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Ian, what if, what if you don't know what's going to be served for each round, but there mm -hmm. are ways to find out? And yes. then, so if you don't declare your team order early, you know it's going to get harder towards the end, but you don't know exactly what's coming when. And so if you can figure that out, then you can place the right team member in the right round. In Right. Like if you can figure out which round is going to have the the underdark surprise, right? Slightly poisonous mushrooms and things. And if you've got that like Loxodon constitution, round two is going to be your round. <laughs> or maybe the elf that knows how to pick, you know, the proper greenery out of the bad greenery, because it doesn't have to be all meterific, uh -huh. right? It, it could be uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like you're saying, like that underdark surprise could be you need to know <laughs> which pieces to eat out of the salad. Mm -hmm. Pretty mm -hmm. cool. I yeah. Like <laughs> so if so you, if you eat that, these leaves, your your mouth will go numb, and you're just gonna have trouble finishing. <laughs> so skip those. Yeah, I I I feel like I feel like this 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 opening scene has now turned into the entire adventure, which is fantastic. And now now <laughs> I, I I put this little footwork section. It's something I've always enjoyed about the 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 shadow run games. This could be run in shadow run. Mm -hmm. You don't know that, mm -hmm. but you know. So uh -huh. so here's some things they can find out in footwork. You know. Uh, you know, which, which, which e ingredients, secret ingredients are being used for which meals, uh, what special rules each round has, uh, and, uh, the order in which the dishes are coming out. So yeah. different things for, for different things you could kind of discover through like these flashbacks and, uh, yeah. And then each round is kind of like a, a whole, a whole encounter of roles because, you know, you're, 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 you're trying to guess what the, based on your other roles, which, which meal it is, you're trying to guess which, which round of rules this is. Oh, this is right. the round where you can yeah. only use a straw and you, you know, <laughs> why? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And. Uh, something you can, if you, if you like this kind of angle, something you could do is make each dish be from uh, a certain like culture or part of the world such that there may be etiquette involved. Oh, so yeah. for example, do you yeah. use your hands? Um, should you do something before you eat or halfway, you know, is there maybe there are three plates, but you have to eat them in a certain order and that could be points, right? Like knowing that. Yeah. 
Uh, I say this as a person who's written uh, the instructions for a tea ceremony challenge uh, during fourth edition. So. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. I, I, part of my brain immediately went back. I mean, this, this feels like the experiences, my goodness. Like I'm just reminded of the, the sensates from Planescape, um, which is one of my favorite factions. Um, yeah. I almost love the idea that one of these, one of these meals, when you, you try eating it, you have to like your, your mind somehow enters it. Like there's a mental challenge aspect to this mm. one. Um, I don't know what that, that ghost peppers? kind of thing or something. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. 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 Ghost peppers? I love it. <laughs> Um, yeah, and, and, and the, you really know, fun. the reason to do stuff like this is because uh, you have such a variety of characters, right? And so if your your things are just swallow bunches of meat, and then, well, your 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 players are only some players will feel good about it. And so, you, you know, right. this way they can everybody can have something out of each scene. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like uh, like this mental <laughs> one, you know, like, uh, you know, you can use ca or, uh, charisma or intelligence skills for right. Uh, this Rates. first one, you you know, maybe it's like a, a you know blowfish, right? The round one, uh, it's like blowfish, uh, and you have to like use perception or oh wisdom to uh, cut away the poison. <laughs> or right. uh, your and your I... thiefy footwork to bring the antidote with you. <laughs> exactly right. Or yeah, Just the whole thing. <laughs> Yeah, or yeah, we could even add Dex to this. Uh, Dex as, <laughs> as an option as well for all of that, right? Yeah, so I, I like be, this yeah. note in the chat uh, is about like allowing only one character per round, like this, this very careful choices all the way through. I think uh -huh. that's really, really, that that's what I'm seeing for this, um, for this footwork. And it sounds really cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like this. This is fun. You know, and then of course, there's going to be the large meal, the one large meal that is a con you know, con save for sure. Right. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, it's just like a huge pile of food and it's a ridiculous con save, right? And it'll just be <laughs> stupid and fun. Also, yeah, <laughs> you can also have like uh, with this giant meal, you can have a situation where maybe it's like a, an enormous beast, right? Yeah. But you, you're, you're, maybe you're both eating from the same thing. And so oh. you have to choose what cuts do you take off. So that's where your knowledge as a hunter, <laughs> yeah. you know, sort of survival type mm -hmm. stuff can kick mm -hmm. in. Cause you, wow. you know, like, do you, is it good to eat the heart? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't right. Or there could be bonuses, right? Like if you eat the heart, oh, giant boost to con momentarily for one round or who knows right. or the other way around. Yeah. Oh like my gosh. I love that it especially coming late because I can see you you look over at the you know last year's victors and over the, there's just this Goliath like leaning back in a chair like hands behind their head like yeah what's this round salad that hallucinogenic salad they're not interested they're they're right. waiting for their turn they know yeah. it's coming and you're like is it a is it a big food is it frozen is that what's going on <laughs> I don't know yeah but I think I think in some of the in some of the flashbacks you should see some of those mismatches because during yeah. their footwork, they didn't put the right people in the right order because it's right. random. So, you know, <laughs> you get the and elf. If you learn that the huge Goliath is like known for their, their mastery of hunting or something, that might clue you into yeah. the skills you need. Or, yeah. Yeah. And then maybe part of the footwork is trying to rearrange. You could, uh, you know, you can uh, potentially rearrange, right? Mm -hmm. um, I forget which, uh, what, what system it was, but they're, they're, there's an RPG system, and I played it. It was for um, you know heist style games where you have the flashback, um, you know, and it, this has oh, come up before. Yeah. Um, you know, it's maybe yeah, <laughs> something like that, right? Where it's a flashback, and you go, okay, well, you get you you succeeded at the skill, so you get a flashback to use for this purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, and then right. whenever it comes up, well, actually, you know, what I did was I swapped the names around, so the judge calls up the wrong person, and they got to go with it right <laughs> so that's amazing yeah le leverage there we go yeah it was leverage that was the one that i was playing um but uh yeah it, you know and I, I i i think i think like uh i think that's great i like i like the idea Very of cool. adding flashbacks in there in, in use of the flashbacks right i think that's really fun uh because yeah the footwork definitely you know doesn't quite fit the D the D, D format if we were doing D, D in a way because it is so extended um right. you know so i love doing it in in the sense of a flashback um question on this this is great i love this whole thing 
um who is trying to overthrow this entire event who's who's throwing a wrench in the works like is there a mm. plot we're discovering in the background is there a battle in between rounds two and three hmm yeah uh so or yeah. is it just eating and we're done i, I mean you <laughs> I mean, know that's a lot I, I i think i was thinking it was just eating competition and but maybe maybe there is something else right uh maybe it's an assassination attempt on somebody Right. What if or, this is what if this is our only chance to get close to Tom Well Zookington? <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh <laughs> oh no. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's oh. coming back for their revenge and they must be stopped because we're of course, you know, good members of the Exploration Society. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean that's a good one. Maybe a bunch of critters, fey mimics attempted to eat the food that is meant for the competition. Mm. Oh, um, one thought no. I kind of had was we are the Exploration Society, so we may have artifacts from different realms. So perhaps yeah. during the food eating, we get robbed mm. and we have to do a whodunit. Right. Um, oh, intriguing. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I, I like this idea of these uh, these critters who are coming in and eating the food. Maybe during our investigation, we notice a bunch of it is missing, and uh, mm -hmm. and the, maybe we the competition will not be able to continue. Maybe maybe they're taking all the pies for the big dessert. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like that. The dessert round has been stolen. I like that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh... I mean, that means it has to be last, basically. So we've got time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Has been stolen. Can the party find it? You could do a thing in there where you discover it after round one, but round two is coming close. Do you like try to fix it now or do you try to gain some more evidence? You know, maybe they get stronger over time or something, you know, be a, a couple like a couple different routes to get there. <laughs> yeah. When when does this fall in? Does this fall in? Maybe after round one, uh, dessert stolen. Or, you know, maybe it's just whenever we start doing some footwork, we figure it out. And we have a track about, you know, how much yeah. stronger they get during dif different rounds here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I like right. that. So you, you may not discover it until the very end uh, yeah. when everybody else discovers it. But maybe you could manage to discover it early on, which might let you pick up some clues. And then between some particular rounds, you can do something about it. Right. Mm. Ooh. And not save all of them. I mean, you know the other team really loves like pecan pie, so don't save those. Like, just <laughs> you want to get every advantage you can. <laughs> yeah. Oh my or, or gosh! They hate that's it, so you really good. want to get it back because otherwise they would maybe skip this round and you'd lose. Right. Yeah. I, yeah, I love I mean, this suggestion yeah. as like as like a minor moment in this story too. <laughs> Here in the chat. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's good. Uh, somebody sabotaging the competition by passing out snacks between rounds that are deceptively, that are deceptively filled. Filled. <laughs> Yeah. That's very smart. <laughs> I like that a lot. That could be a nice goad where someone like tries to like goad you into eating extra. It's just, right? a, little, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's just a cookie, right? Like that it's kind of thing. It's wafer thin. <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you go for it, like, well, that's your foolishness because it's actually surprisingly filling. It's right it's a berry go it's a good that. berry cookie right and right. so you're full <laughs> yes, good berry cookies i love that good berry cookie is great that's funny i like it when you can take um like a normal game element like that and bring it in because that's the kind of thing that then like the druid that casts it you know will enjoy figuring right. that one out or... like wait a second i recognize these i've got some in my pocket no one ever eats them <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Handing out Lembus bread. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Totally. Oh man. No, Amazing. I yeah. I, I, I like I like that 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 people are offered secret uh good berries. I think, you know, you could try to sneak good berries into food too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so and, that and that's a, where a as great it, you know to what extent do you wanna just say, hey, let the players uh, try wacky things and it could yeah. work. Or do you want to, you know, put in some formal cheating mechanics? I probably wouldn't put formal cheating mechanics. No. But, uh, I, I, find, I think they're hard to write and confining. But... Yeah. I mean, once you start cheating, it's hard to think about all the ways that a party could wreck things. 
Yeah, no, but I think it's pretty good to hint at the fact that you could do these things or maybe even mm -hmm. see people doing these and maybe getting kicked out or something, right? Like maybe yeah. one of the flashbacks is to round one and you see a druid, uh, you know, slip a good berry into a, a salad of somebody's, right? And, you know, and then they, they, they eat it and they can't eat the rest of the salad all of a sudden. They're just full. Right. But then afterwards, maybe they get caught and you, you know, so, you know, there was some cheating going on. It's yeah. Yeah. I think that would be a fun flashback. You you take a tour and you see like the brig over here that they've got set oh, yeah. up and you're like, what? wait, why do you have that? And I'm like, Cheaters, of course. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Let them know that it's possible and, you know, letting the DM know that if they do, you know, go go with it. You know, this this place isn't uh, isn't under lock and guard or anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cheating can definitely change stuff. I like that. Yeah, it's just a little bit, wow. maybe a little bit higher DC too, right? But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I love it. All right, so all right, so the opening scene, they're getting ready to go. Then we jump into flashbacks. Flashbacks are, um, you know, a combination of the footwork and skill challenges to grow their knowledge. Um, mm -hmm. That should potentially give them um, points to use towards <laughs> flashbacks or something like that, right? to adjust uh, how the rounds are going to their advantage. They have the options to cheat. We're not spelling those out. And then we're going to do several eating rounds, and each round is going to have a different interesting challenge, such as the, uh, you know, the, the, the using the right etiquette, using the right utensils, uh, mm -hmm. eating the right parts of the beast. Uh, you know, uh, one of them's a hallucinogen, so it becomes a charisma intelligence thing or something fun. Uh, yeah, so that's where we're at. Um, yeah, at some point, the during the des before the dessert round, we we have a run in with some mischievous um, folks, and I think that's right. that's gonna be our this is gonna be our only like real combat if we decide to combat it, which yeah. I think is great. Yeah. I, I like that. Um... Yeah, I'm absolutely seeing like almost a, a time mechanic, like the flashback mechanic, right? So if mm -hmm. you decide that you're going to spend your time cheating, you're not going to learn about the etiquette or, or know about those things because you don't have that much time. These rounds are like rapid, right? <laughs> yeah, so so, so um, maybe really each, each round has the ability ability to do one flashback, right? Yeah. And if you one. investigate the pies, you're also missing. I mean, that's, that's part of your deal. It's part and, of your time. <laughs> yeah. And you know what could be fun for uh, the dessert round? What's that? So the dessert round is like a jelly ooze thing that is fighting you as you eat it. Oh, yes. <laughs> You've got to like wrestle it and pin it down while you eat the soft good parts, you know? Is it? And, but, but that's like a, a, you know, that's the full team going, right? Is. I don't is, know. It could, it could be. It could be. Yeah, you could have the whole team as, as dessert because yeah, of that. Yeah, it's desserts a team thing, right? Uh, Your way to the center of the gelatinous cube. I mean, it could be anything, right? It, there's, it could be pretty fun. Yeah, it's, it's the gelatinous jello cube, you know, and you got to eat your way to the center, or it's. Uh, oh my gosh, candy. Gum. I love this because I mean, there are a lot of. Oh, that's true. true. <laughs> so right, all right. Here's my thought. So you, 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 you have an arena and each team, you know, each team has a side and there are like oozes and chocolate puddings and things like that all over. And you, you have to, you, there's like little medallions in each one and you have, whoever, whichever team gets the most little medallions will win. And you have to like, you have to, you have to consume these things in order to find them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I like it. I, I'm just imagining again that Goliath who they announced the big like meat eating round and they're like, that's still not me. Uh, my time is coming. <laughs> it's dessert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, yes. You're like, what? The, the giant isn't taking on the massive eating contest? No, it's all oh. about the yeah, wrestle down the jelly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's amazing pudding. Yeah. Oh no! If it's high, high level, level a corpse flower salad. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, I mean, oh it could gosh. be something like one of those. Uh, what was the third edition super horrible creature that was a plant that you would wrestle and it would try to eat you with its maw? Oh my uh, gosh! I don't know. I go to tea. Uh, 
I want to say Tesseract, but that's it's not a, you know, obviously not that. But it's something <laughs> yeah. that sounds like that. I think. Yeah. Ugh. I'm going to have to look it up. I like, I like black chocolate pudding. Very good. I mean, there's... Yeah. This is all sorts of gruesome things you could throw into this finale. <laughs> that's yeah. Um, oh my god, that and that'd be a ton of fun, right? And yeah. I, I just, I mean, it's such a cool opportunity to add like plant monsters and things like that. You know, things that you might not typically see. Uh, to be very fun. I don't, I don't do a lot of plant monsters myself. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I should. You, you know, and and with this basic outline, this is honestly like this is a a scene a in a, a a one shot adventure that we could run in any setting. Uh, in, oh, any, yeah. in any any play play setting, right? So you could this could be Shadowrun, this could be World of Darkness, this could be Fate, this could be whatever. Um, and yeah, no, it's kind of fun. I I like this a lot. So the, everybody, we have we have written the high stakes. Uh, the stakes <laughs> yeah. have never been higher, and uh, it is a adventure around an eating competition. Yeah, uh, this is a good way, outline. For, I mean, for plans is good stuff. Yeah, I, I like finally it. thought I. It's a tendriculus, and uh, I, if you ever do plant encounters, that's a great one to use. All right. Well, now I'm looking yeah, that yeah. up right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. What's the prize? That's, we Ooh. forgot one important thing, the prize, the rewards. Oh. Uh, a big old medallion of a scallion. <laughs> I mean, that's that's definitely what we're we're taking from the last year's heroes, right? Yeah, we're pulling it right off their necks. Yep, <laughs> putting and it on out. They, and then they have the big old the big old uh, medallion of a scallion, and I don't know uh, what's what's a what's a what's another fun prize because because the the medallion of the scallion is the is the bragging rights. Bragging. Yeah, but, right. but 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 what's something else that that could really draw folks to it? Uh, so any, any kind of food thing that would somehow empower you or something, right? Could be really cool. Yeah. Like you could, have, and you could do anything. You could have, you know, breath mints of eloquence. You could have, yeah. um, you know, some uh, sort of an air fryer of ointment type food. You could, have, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, a spatula of striking. I mean, yeah. Oh, a mundane item looking item that gives you the chef feet. I love that. Oh, that's very cool. Chef feet's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's I so love good. that. That's it's a really fun feat. Uh let's see. So uh let's go to like the ladle of the chef, right? Mm -hmm. Ladle, 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 paddle, ladle. It's just one D, isn't it? There we go. Yep. All right. <laughs> The the ladle of the shelf the chef so uh, gives <laughs> a PC who oops, I thought I turned that off who attunes to it uh, the chef feet the chef feet yeah boom boom did it it's fantastic good group resource a big fan. <laughs> right and it was a wow. group effort so I it's, think that's good I. I got to say, I, I think the Tendriculus is a great monster for this specifically because it can also swallow you whole. Oh, okay. Um, which I think is a perfect <laughs> counter and, to and the if deceiving you make contest. It <laughs> super enormous, it could swallow people from both teams, right? Just give them right. more attacks yeah. and the just ability to just throw them in. Devour. <laughs> but maybe if you're caught inside, you still can eat. Like it, maybe it still counts. You could fight inside just harder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> very uh, nice this yeah is also oh, wow. a, you, you could also make this fun by depending on how well you did in the earlier rounds imposing certain conditions i mean poisoned is a clear one but uh -huh. fatigued you know anything like that so yeah. that in that last fight with the dessert you know you'd be feeling those effects it's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah this would be fun this would be a fun fun day <laughs> yeah this would be a fun adventure yeah all right well uh taos wow. Uh, thank you so much for writing this fantastic adventure with us. And thank you so yeah. much for being back on the show. Oh, God, Meat awesome. Sweats. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, meat Sweats, <laughs> yes. Uh, Teos, if folks are looking for you on the internets, where can they follow you, find you, and check out oh, your God. general stuff? If you go to alphastream.org, you can find all my writings, and you can sign up for the uh, weekly um, blog articles to come directly into your inbox so you can get them without fail. Um, and then you can also find me on Twitter, at alphastream. 
and you can listen to the podcast that I'm on, Mastering Dungeons, on Twitter at Mastering D and D, and you can find us on your iTunes under Mastering Dungeons or whatever other podcast catcher you do. And we're part of the misdirected, mar- the misdirected uh, network news network. Nice. All right. Well, we'll have to get you on again soon. Thank you so much, Teos. Uh, Rich, let's go ahead and yeah. wrap this show we'll, up. We'll see you Tuesday. Oh, yeah, we'll see you Tuesday. <laughs> All right. That's, I mean, another show in the books. Uh, we right. did it. And, uh, you know, and we'll we'll be back next week. Um, I, it, what's where, where can folks find you this week? Uh, oh, Rich? my goodness. I am taking a break from the Academy, so I'll probably be posting uh, a little bit on Twitter as I get my adventure written for our Kickstarter. I'm excited to get that out. Um, but uh, the biggest thing is to, to check us out right here on Saving Throw every Tuesday for the next month. Four more weeks left of our, our Learn to Play of Dune Adventures in the Imperium. Uh, by Modiphius. I love that game. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm I'm, watch it. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. And you can, of course, find me over on my Twitch channel, DJ Pirate Rabbits. Uh, I DJ house music and trance and stuff like that over there. I'm also going to be starting a pirate series soon where I talk about pirate stuff. So uh, and watch an old pirate show. It should be fun. So with all that, uh, thank you, everyone, for for hanging out with us. Uh, join us next week where we'll have another fantastic case, guest. We're going to talk about uh, Magic the Gathering. We're going to talk about Legend Keeper. We're going to talk about World Anvil and mm-hmm. uh, whatever else comes up probably between that and TSR. <laughs> right, right. Um, and, and stick around uh, for New Pantheons, which is up, yeah. coming up in about 15 minutes, right? <laughs> yep. All right. Awesome. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.